moved to Kitchener, uh, Canada when I was about five years old. And I've got uh, five other brothers in my family. My dad uh, started us in the boxing as a form of self-defense. He watched Muhammad Ali and he liked Ali. So he, uh, my oldest brother, Felix, was getting picked on at school. And my father said, okay, I'm gonna get him into something to defend himself. So he got us into boxing. My older two brothers started boxing and then myself started as well. We started at the Waterloo Regional Boxing Academy. So all five boys were boxing. My father opened a boxing club. It was called the Little Archie's Boxing Club and we all boxed under that gym as well. That gym got broken into and eventually it closed down so we ended up uh, moving on to some other gyms. At the age of 17 I ended up uh, moving out on my own so I wasn't sure what I wanted to do but I did know that I wanted to finish high school. That was one of my goals. After I finished high school and I said you know what I'm gonna get ready for the 92 Olympics and I'll be there. In 1989 at this tournament in the Provincials I knocked out this youngster with my right hand. This pro fighter was there and he said wow you really whipped that punch. And I said, yes, I did, the whip, the whip. And from there, the name, the whip stuck. After I, shortly after I knocked out Chuck Cadu, I fought Mark LeDuc a number of times. And every year I fought him, I kept losing a decision. Now six times in a row, I kept losing to this youngster. Finally, the seventh time to get ready for the Olympic trials in 1992, I finally beat him. I was the only challenger to beat a champion. Knowing that I lost the decisions didn't discourage me. I kept going forward because I knew that I was good enough and that I was able to become a champion. In 1992, while working at Freeport Hospital, I had a big decision to make. I was working a full-time job, it was safe and secure, and I had to decide either to leave that job and go on and pursue my dreams of becoming world champion as a professional boxer, or to stay at the job. And I thought, well, I didn't want to have any regrets. I figured like, I could always work out this job after I finished my boxing career, but as far as boxing, it's something that I had to do now while I was young while I had the fire, the desire, and the drive in me to make it happen. So I left that job and went on to chase my dreams. Okay, I stayed on and I fought for the Nationals. I won it that year, and then I decided it was time to go pro and continued on the train with my, my trainer, Papa Joe Hagenal. Papa Joe and myself, we set out ambitious and hungry to become world champion. I eventually got a chance to fight for the Canadian Championship. Tony Padilla was 13 and old with 10 big knockouts. He was knocking everybody out. He was 147 pounder and I was a 140 pounder. But I accepted the challenge because I felt if I couldn't be the best, if I couldn't win the Canadian Championship, I didn't want to box. I trained hard, I believed in myself. And in the first round of the fight, I got knocked down. I had to come back in order to win the fight. I came back and in the sixth round, that right hand, the whip came into play again. I ended up knocking Tony Badia out in the sixth round to capture the Canadian Championship. From there I went on to fight for the WBF Intercontinental Championship. I went on, I won that belt. After that I went on to fight for the WBC Caribbean Championship. I won that belt as well now, but that wasn't enough. I had an opportunity to fight for the WBF World Championship. Got ready for that fight. I went out there, I was behind on all the scorecards. In the 11th round my trainer told me I had to knock him out. I went out there and I gave it my all and I knocked him out in the 11th round. I caught him with the right hand again, and I eventually fought again also for the WBC Fecker Box Super Welterweight Championship of the World. I won that belt. Five belts now. You know, it's been a great journey going after all these belts, and it was great to become world champion, and it was great that I was able to do it right here living in Kitchener. When people told me that it couldn't be done, people around me, they said I was crazy for leaving what I did to go out there and chase my dreams. But I believed in myself. I knew that with hope it was possible. Because if I first didn't believe in myself, nobody else would. And I made it possible. I'm living proof of that. Actually, it was approximately about seven years ago when um, one of the great trainers here, Arnie Beam, passed away that I decided to open my own boxing club. I thought, you know, I thought to myself, I would worked hard in this community. I'd done a lot of stuff with the kids, a lot of community work, and I thought, you know what, if I open my own gym, the Whip Boxing Academy, it'll be a great gym, great outlet for kids to get their, to channel their energy and to learn positive things from a world champion right here in the city. Tommy, can you, um, can you supervise these guys here, watch these yeah. guys here? I'm gonna go do some work with one of the guys. I love training kids, you know, I feel that after all what I've been through, what I've seen, I've seen a lot of kids come, a lot of kids go. Work your punches up and down, right? Jab to the head, right hand to the body, come out with three ups to the head, right? Put some speed behind your punches, snap, snap. All right, you all right? 
But I think it's great when you get a kid off the street and they've got all this raw energy and they're channeling it in the wrong way. You can help them channel it properly, show them how to use it in a positive way where they can learn from good and not get in trouble on the streets. It's a great feeling when you see the success these young people have. When they've learned what you've taught them, they go out there and they do positive things. Uh. Yep. You know, I find that it's important that when you train fighters, that if you've been there, you've done it, it's easy to pass it on to the youngsters because you know what they're capable of doing because you've done it. So when you teach them something, they will know that you've been there. You're not just telling them to do something that they think can't be done. You can show them, you know what, hey, I've been there, I've done it, and they'll understand and they can more readily accept what you're trying to teach them. And I think that managing it, it's a tough role. I mean, I, I did it myself in my own career, so it's come a little easier for me to manage fighters. And I think that I'm gonna be, have a, a good stable coming up in this KW area very soon. Don't smell yourself. The biggest lesson I've learned in life is to go after your dreams. If you have a goal, you have a dream, chase it. Don't let anybody discourage you or tell you it can't be done. Believe in yourself. With hope, it is possible.